Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Bunnies, and this video will show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus included in your Science Buddies Raspberry Pi Projects Kit. If you have a different model Raspberry Pi or you purchased your Raspberry Pi accessories separately, the setup procedure may differ slightly, so you can check the link in the description of this video to the official Raspberry Pi Foundation setup instructions, which will have instructions for each individual model of the Raspberry Pi. You will need the following parts from your kit in order to set up. We have the Raspberry Pi itself, the case, an HDMI cable, the micro USB charging cable, the micro SD card, a gray ribbon cable, a breadboard, and this T-shaped red connector called the Pi Wedge. In addition to these parts, you will also need to supply your own USB keyboard and mouse along with a TV or computer monitor, ideally with an HDMI connection. If your TV or monitor has a different type of port, like DVI or VGA, you will need an adapter, along with external speakers or headphones. What we're going to do now is show you how to connect all the accessories to the Raspberry Pi, and it doesn't really matter what order you do this in, as long as you connect the power last. So we're going to move our charging cable out of the way for now, and go through the other accessories one by one and show you how to connect them. So you'll notice that the Raspberry Pi doesn't come in a case. It comes with a separate clear plastic case, and the Raspberry Pi comes as a bare circuit board, which means you need to be a little careful because it can be sensitive to static electricity. So you'll want to touch a nearby large metal object to discharge any static electricity from yourself and avoid shuffling around on carpet in socks before handling it. But after that, it should be safe to pick up. And the case has two halves that you can just pop apart. And you're going to need to line up the case with the Raspberry Pi. If you look carefully at the side, you'll see there are cutouts for the various ports on the Raspberry Pi. So on this side, I have these little cutouts in the plastic that are going to line up with the micro USB port, the HDMI port, and the headphone jack. So I'm going to take the Raspberry Pi, pop it into the case, make sure I push down so it snaps firmly into place. And I'm going to take the top half of the case, and again, this will only fit on in one direction because of cutouts for the ports. In this case, you can see big cutouts for the Ethernet port and the USB ports. So that snaps onto the top, fixed into place, and now we have our Raspberry Pi in its case. Okay, now we're going to plug various peripherals into the Raspberry Pi, and again, it doesn't matter exactly what order you do this in. Here I have a USB adapter for a wireless keyboard and mouse that I'm using, so I'm just going to plug that into one of the USB ports. I have my micro SD card. Now the Raspberry Pi does not have an internal hard drive, unlike a regular computer, so all of your operating system, all of your programs are stored on this micro SD card, so the Raspberry Pi will not boot up without it, so this is very important. To access the slot for this, you actually flip the Raspberry Pi over, and you're going to hold the micro SD card so the writing is facing up. And carefully push it all the way into that slot. Make sure it goes in all the way. So when it's in all the way, the edge should be almost flush with the end of the case. It shouldn't be sticking out at all. We can flip that back over. I have my HDMI cable. The other end of this is going to go to my TV or computer monitor. I'm going to plug that into the HDMI port here. And finally, remember, if you're using a TV with built-in speakers, that's all you need because the HDMI cable will also carry sound. If you're using a computer monitor that does not have built-in speakers, or if you're using an adapter for a VGA or DVI cable, then you're going to need separate headphones or external speakers. So, for example, I have headphones here with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can plug that in right here to the headphone jack on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to unplug that for now, but if you do need separate speakers or headphones, that's where you plug them in. Now, at this point, our Raspberry Pi would be ready to boot up if we plugged in the power, but the Science Buddies Raspberry Pi projects all involve connecting circuits to your Raspberry Pi, so there are a few more things we need to connect to the Raspberry Pi's General Purpose Input and Output, or GPIO pins, 
which is this set of two rows of pins that you can see here. So to set that up, we're going to need the three parts we mentioned earlier. We have the breadboard, the ribbon cable, and the pie wedge. So you'll notice the pie wedge has this big black connector with a little notch cut out on one side. And if you look at the bottom of the ribbon cable, one end of it has a little notch on the inside that will line up with that notch on the pie wedge. The other side also has a notch, but it's on the outside. So if we tried to plug that in such that the notch lined up, the cable would be covering the pie wedge and then we can't read the labels. So we want to do that the other way. Take the end that has the notch on the inside and plug that into the black connector on top of the pie wedge. Push down firmly. That should be connected. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other end. The Raspberry Pi has all of these pins sticking up. There are holes in the bottom of the connector for the ribbon cable. So we're going to carefully line those up. You want to make sure everything is straight before you push down here. If it's crooked or twisted, you might bend the pins accidentally if you try to force it. Push down gently. Now your Raspberry Pi is connected to the Pi wedge with the ribbon cable. And then finally, you're going to connect these pins on the bottom of the pie wedge to your breadboard. So we'll learn a little more about breadboards later when you're starting your first project, but you'll see the breadboard has this gap in the middle, and the pie wedge has two rows of pins. Those pins are going to straddle this gap, and the very first set of pins is going to go into the first row on the breadboard. So I'll hold this up a little more closely so you can see it. So again, look at the side there. First row of pins going into the first row on the breadboard. If I look at it from this angle, you can see those pins are straddling the gap in the middle of the breadboard. Push down, they should go all the way into the breadboard. And there you go. So now your Raspberry Pi is set up and you are ready to plug in the power cable and boot up for the first time. Okay, so now we're going to take our micro USB cable. I have plugged the other end of this into a wall outlet. I'm going to plug this end into the micro USB port right next to the HDMI port. And as soon as I do that, you should see a little red LED turn on near the port that indicates that your Raspberry Pi is receiving power. And you should see a green LED start flashing, which is a good sign because that means the Raspberry Pi is reading data from the SD card as it boots up. So if you don't see both of those LEDs lighting up like this, that could indicate that you have a problem either with your power or with your SD card, you can check the link in the description below this video to our FAQ and troubleshooting page to help you figure out what's going on there. But now you just wait for about a minute for your Raspberry Pi to boot up, and then we'll switch over to talking about what you should see on the desktop. Once the Raspberry Pi boots up, you should see a desktop interface that is pretty familiar if you're used to using a Windows or Mac computer. The first thing you will notice is a reminder box telling you to connect your Raspberry Pi to the internet, which is required if you want to access the online Science Buddies instructions directly on your Raspberry Pi instead of on another computer. You can do that using an ethernet cable if you want a hardwired connection, or just like on Windows and Mac, there is an icon on the desktop that you can click to connect to a local Wi-Fi network. So once you've done either one of those, you can close this reminder. And then if you purchased a Science Buddies Raspberry Pi kit, you will see two shortcuts on the desktop. There is a shortcut to the online Science Buddies instructions and a shortcut to Scratch 2, which is the programming language we'll be using for the Science Buddies projects. So you can open both of those. And if you are using a widescreen monitor, there should be enough space to open them side by side. So that way you can see the directions and your programming window all at once and you don't have to worry about toggling back and forth. If you did not purchase a Science Buddies kit or you are not using the SD card that came with the kit, you will not have those desktop shortcuts, so you will need to access those programs through the menu by clicking on the Raspberry Pi icon in the upper left. You can access the internet browser by going to internet and then selecting the Chromium web browser, going to our homepage, www.sciencebuddies.org, and then searching for Raspberry Pi, and you can find the instructions. You can access Scratch 2 by going to Programming, and then make sure you select Scratch 2 and not Scratch. There are different versions of Scratch for the Raspberry Pi. The instructions for the Science Buddies projects are specifically written for Scratch 2. 
So once you have both of those open, you are ready to start your first project. And we have a separate video that will introduce you to programming in Scratch if you have never done that before. Finally, one important note about something that is a little different between your Raspberry Pi and a regular computer. Your Raspberry Pi does not have a power button, and it is important to shut it down properly using options through the menu by clicking the Raspberry Pi icon, going down to shutdown, and then selecting either shutdown or reboot, depending on what you want to do. If you click reboot, then the Raspberry Pi will reboot automatically. You don't have to do anything else. If you want to shut down, you need to click the shutdown button wait for the green LED to stop blinking, then remove the power cable and plug it back in to boot back up. It is very important not to just unplug the power cable without shutting down properly first because that can corrupt the SD card. So assuming your Raspberry Pi has shut down, the green LED should stop blinking completely because there's no longer any SD card activity. The red LED will still be on because your Raspberry Pi is still receiving power. So in order to reboot, you then unplug the micro USB cable, plug it back in, and again you should see the red LED turn on and the green LED start blinking as the Raspberry Pi reads the SD card. If you have any questions or you weren't able to get to this point because you couldn't get your Raspberry Pi to boot up properly, again please follow the links in the written description of this video for help and troubleshooting with your setup steps.